Hey guys, Peter here to tell you about the latest from Hinayana Shatter and Fall of November 10th on Napalm Records. The album has 11 tracks, 50 minutes in length, and this is the band's second full length studio album. They are an American melodic death metal band. Now, I always start my record reviews with the album design, the album structure, and I just want to point out that as far as this record is concerned, that's perhaps the weakest spot, at least in my mind. And I'll explain why. The album is very balanced, it's very cohesive. There's not a lot of room to breathe in between songs. It's easy to detect what makes this album tick and what is the common DNA amongst each and every single track. When you get to the last song, it's very hard to tell the forest from the trees. The album starts to feel like just one really long song and that takes away from the playability of the album. It doesn't take away from the playability of the individual tracks, but it takes away from the playability of the overall record. Now, there's ways for you to fix that and I can think of four different ways. One, you can add two interludes that really break the record, that offer something that it's different, that it's unique, that it's not part of any other song, and it really uh, resets the mind of the listener, and you create three parts to this album. You can also include an intro and an outro uh, that are maybe acoustic or keyboard-driven, classic keyboard, a piano if you will, like something different once again from the DNA of the songs so that these two tracks can, can reset the mind of the listener in terms of what comes before and what comes after. Another thing that you can do is you can shorten the length of the album. If this record was 10 songs, 9 songs and it's between 35 and 40 minutes, no issues. Then it's the right length for an album that has this sort of sound, that has this sort of presence. And then last but not least, clean vocals. One or two tracks with clean vocals definitely sets a different parameter to how you perceive this album. Female vocalists with clean vocals would be perfect for some of these super haunting songs that have a lot of doom and gloom in them. So overall, the design takes a little bit away from the experience of listening to, that, to the record, but once again, it takes nothing away from the quality of the individual tracks. And a lot of that quality really comes from the production. This album, sound-wise, shouldn't surprise fans. It falls in line with everything that the band has released up until now. But the production, the overall song structure, the overall design of how these tracks come together individually, not necessarily the collective, but individually, really shows growth and maturity from the band. And that makes the overall experience individually, song by song, extremely pleasurable. This album sounds great. It's an album that because it's very compact, sometimes it's hard to see all of the different layers. But the production behind this album allows you to better differentiate what's happening and what's doing what. An example, for, ex for instance, is the keyboards. The keyboards, the synths on this record, uh, obviously they're gonna infuse melody, but to me they add an incredible atmosphere to these tracks, really bringing a little bit of that dark, gloomy vibe to the songs that it's almost needed in order for the tracks to be what they are, in order for them to have their full essence. So that part of the sound was extremely well done and it didn't get of in the way of the melodic sound of the guitars. Some bands start to infuse a lot of keyboard melodies and they allow the guitars to be predominantly more heavy. It's not the case with this record. The guitars are still heavy, but there's a duality to them. There's a heavier side of the guitar sound and then there's a more melodic dr driven weaving melody experience as well. So they're very dynamic from that point of view and they don't get in the way of the keys and the keys don't get into the way of those uh, melodic guitars that have an incredible impact also in the atmosphere uh, and mood of these songs. Then you have the drums. The drum sound on this album is phenomenal. A lot of the heaviness of this record really falls on the shoulders of the drums. They have this essence to them that makes them feel really big, really powerful, but also uh, with a lot in it. It's not an empty drum sound. This record has a very earthy drum sound that normally you don't necessarily associate with this genre, but it helps ground the tracks, it helps give the tracks a different mythology and definitely a different DNA, and it elevates the quality. So it's a great drum sounding album, but then again, it's a great sounding album for all the elements, even the bass on this record. Even though there's no parts where the bass really pops, I don't think you need it to pop, you just need it to be there to give some consistency, to be a little bit of the glue that holds everything together, and that's exactly what the bass is, it's not getting in the way. On an album like this, you don't want the bass to be over the top or to be super noticeable in the mix. It starts to take away from the clarity of the sound, and this album has incredible clarity as far as the sound is concerned. Once it comes to the vocals, there's two guest vocalists on this record, a song with Jake from Realm and a song with Thomas 
from Wolfheart. Actually, both of those songs are two of my favorite tracks on the record. I like the addition of Jake because his delivery is very different. Um, the normal vocals from the band are a little bit deeper, uh, a little bit gruntier, and Jake has more of a screaming style approach that, that differentiates between the two vocals a little bit better. It's easy to see what one is doing and what the other one is doing, and that that's where you're gonna get the impact, and that's where you're gonna get the added value of having somebody guesting on your song. If the person who's guesting sounds exactly like the person who's singing, then at that point, what's what's the point, right? Like, everything just feels the same. Now, Thomas uh, has a more similar delivery. It, not as deep, uh, not as dark, maybe. Uh, a little bit more angrier, but, but it's closer. Those two deliveries are closer. And having said that, the song that features Thomas is my favorite song on the record, so go figure. But I, I like Thomas's addition to the song because the way he comes in, in the chorus specifically, has a, a nice impact. So having these two vocalists, having those songs spread out on the design uh, is, a, is a nice touch. It changes a little bit of the dynamics of the tracks, but it doesn't have an incredible impact or doesn't have an impact at all in the overall design because they kind of blend it in into the same field or they're coming from the same place. Overall, I really enjoy this record. This album shows a lot of growth uh, from the band, but it also shows that there's still room to grow and get better. Obviously, it's only their second album, but you have to tip the hat to them. This is a very mature sounding record. The production behind it is extremely good. The sound behind it is extremely good. The individual songs are extremely good. They just have to work better understanding what they want out of a full length record. Also keeping in mind that not many people these days sit down and put a vinyl on or listen to an album from start to finish. So maybe what do I know? Maybe they just did it exactly how it needs to be done but I enjoy the record. I think this is a great album by Hinayana. As far as favorite songs are concerned, I wanna start off with Mind is a Shadow. This one features Jake. This is a very methodic song with a melodic riff that really cuts through the overall thick wall of sound that the track has. There's, a, there's darkness in that thickness and that melodic riff helps the listener navigate its way through it. Um, Jake's vocals add that more screaming style so that creates a different pattern vocally for the overall song and, and it really helps make the song feel a little bit more dynamic because musically it's not that dynamic it, it doesn't have a lot of movement it stays very consistent so it's important to infuse dynamic mechanisms any way you can and they did it with the vocals next we have the answer a more melodic track that keeps that melody there and then it has a very heavy underbelly so it's still a heavy song but it definitely allows the melody to jump a little bit more into the forefront and to be more one of the drivers of the experience. It's definitely a more texture, a more layer song, uh, emphasizing the melodic side a lot more than the heavier side. Uh, the verses allow the song to change, uh, to have maybe the, the heaviness of the track come a little bit more into the forefront. And then the chorus definitely allows the melodic side to come into the forefront. But the impact that that melodic side has in the chorus and the fact that the melody is still there in the verses makes the overall song feel a lot more melodic and a lot less heavier than what it actually is. It has a great drum sound. The guitar sounds super powerful as well. And I love how the melody is all weaved into this track. Last but definitely not least, my favorite track on the entire album, A Tide Unturning, featuring Thomas of Wolfheart. Uh, this is a great track. Uh, Thomas adds more than anything with his vocal performance uh, an atmosphere. He brings that cold wind that you don't normally get in the desert and these guys are from the desert. So it's a nice mixture of what he brings to his with his voice which is that cold breeze and then you get the other side of the vocal performance on this track where it feels more hot and suffocating. So there's this dynamic vocally that even though the two are not di very different from one another how they impact the song and, the, and how they impact the atmosphere, that is quite different from one another. Uh, I love the melancholic, melodic riff that this song has. It's absolutely killer. Something out of a Finnish melodic death metal band. So having Thomas on this track and having that riff there kind of brings a little bit of wolf heart into this song, more so than just vocally, also musically. And it's a great track all around in terms of how it's constructed and how it's delivered. This is it, Hinayana with Shatter and Fall on November 10th on Napalm Records. Let me know your thoughts on the band and the singles. Use the comment section below. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.